Things I have dealt with as a Belfast bouncer part one again. So I used to be a bouncer in Belfast before I quit in 2017. I experienced a lot of hilarious, violent, disgusting and amazing things. One night while on patrol around the building with my boss, we were drawn into the male toilets by the cleaner who looked quite worried. There was a crowd of lads standing around one of the stall doors banging on it. So I looked underneath and I could see a dude that appeared to be unconscious and my boss kicked the door down. There was a young man lying slumped over the toilet with his arm completely up to the shoulder inside the toilet. He was fishing around in it or something. What that something is I will never know as the toilet was filled completely to the brim with a deep brown sludge of multiple mounds of human excrement. So we got this guy to his feet and carefully brought him upstairs. We couldn't find any ID in his pockets and he was too far gone to tell us who he was. So we flagged down a passing police van. The officers very kindly and reluctantly, I have to say, took this man with them to the local station to identify him and reunite him with his, I'm sure, very impressed mother. I will never get over the smell or the sight, nor will I ever see a braver man than the cleaner who went into the toilet afterwards to deal with the mess. Be safe. Things I have dealt with as a Belfast bouncer are two. The do you know who I am people. Every bouncer ever anywhere has put up with this. Some jumped up little cunt living out of his daddy's pocket waltzing up to your door without a ticket, trying to jump queues, being an arrogant little shit by the end of your undoubtedly riveting interaction. You can almost guarantee this little squirt will be videoing you for their many followers to prove how they will have the club shut down. But just be advised, ladies and gentlemen, everyone beyond and in between. Remembering personal space is an important thing to do if you are interacting with a bouncer. Things I dealt with as a Belfast bouncer, part three. More power to your elbow. An excellent night with trad music and GAA clubs gallantly supporting their colours. A night which was also a complete disaster for a small security team. One night, two rival club members took exception to one another. A fight broke out and before we knew it, the entirety of Mandela Hall had erupted. Hundreds of people beating each other senseless. One of the stewards tried to climb the stage barrier and jump into it and I had to pull him back and then gave the best radio transmission of my time as a bouncer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost Mandela Hall. Our biggest fella that we had stood at the door, revolving, just scooping people with one arm and launching them outside as we pulled them up to him. It was fucking hectic and it was excellent. Things I dealt with as a Belfast bouncer, part four. You must be fed up listening to folks off their head talking shit all night, mate. Yes! Yes, I am! You! You are one of those people! You're chewing your eyebrows off! Your jaw's been registered as a lethal weapon! Your eyes could be mistaken for lumps of coal! You look like a fucking snowman! Jesus Christ, it's snow joke! Wipe your nose! Why are your teeth blue? You look like a Tim Burton creation! Go home! Things I've dealt with as a Belfast bouncer, part five. Bodily fluids. Seriously, you people do not know how to put the correct fluids in the correct place. Lads. Lads. Toilets. A swamp of pish. Seriously, it isn't hard to aim your fucking dick into the toilet or into the urinal. How do you manage to create a tsunami of pish every fucking night? And wash your hands, you mongrels. But boys, they ain't the worst. Ladies, girls, you are the toilet horror queens. Every week, there was a toilet clog with shitey knickers. Used pads slammed onto walls looking like John Kramer's own version of Art Attack. Tampons dangling from stall doors like Christmas decorations. Pish, how do you manage to pish every as much as lads. Surely it's just a squat and squeeze situation. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Lads are gross out in the open. Ladies do all their gross shit where it isn't visible until you've already made good your escape. But remember folks, the next time you come in and you walk past this and you're looking at the ground, we were sober, we remember. You were the phantom bin shitter last Saturday or Lady Padelope writing her name in human jam on the walls. You're all fucking pigging.
Things I dealt with as a Belfast bouncer part six, the Divis Hoods. At certain events, young lads would randomly appear at the door dressed like a wish version of the Aldi version of Elijah Wood and Green Street, making demands such as, let me in mate, demanding access to the club despite the fact they were clearly 15 and had more knives on them than limbs. Naturally I would say, no son, you look like a granny knifer, which would ultimately return the comeback. Have you ever heard of the Divis Hoods? I'm gonna have you fucking shot. I'm gonna have you melted and turned into fan belts. I'm gonna have your teeth removed and made into nice earrings. The lads in this scenario would stand around shoving and pulling one another further and further away from the door before disappearing around the corner shouting, Don't cry! Your dad's a fruit! My uncle makes me play suck the hose with my eyes closed! But to be fair, I actually ended up in a house party with a bunch of lads telling me they were Divis Hoods, and it turns out apart from a bad mix of ADHD and cocaine, they were okay, so long as you can look past all the crime. Things I put up with as a Belfast bouncer, part 7. People who just don't fucking listen. Sorry mate, we're sold out. Really? Can I buy a ticket? No, that's what sold out means. Next. Sorry mate, students only tonight. Can I come in? No. Do you have a student card? No. I'm not a student. You're also about 20 years older than the entirety of our clientele tonight. Can I come in? I'm looking into your future and I'm seeing a sexual offences prevention order. I'm seeing the inside of McGilligan prison and I see a bar of soap. Next. You're, you're way too drunk mate. You're gonna need, you need to go straighten up. But sir, all my, all my mates are in there. I appreciate that, pal, but I can't let you in when you can't even stand. I've, I've only had one or two. Okay then, you can't handle your booze, man. Go get a coffee and a bite to eat. Come back in half an hour and we'll see what sort of shape you're in. Ah, uh, am I, am I, am I better now? You're completely covered in sick. Yes, but I don't, I don't have any booze in me anymore. No. Next. Right, folks, that's it. Last orders at the bar. Last drinks. Half an hour drinking up time. Right, folks, it's time to ship out. Have you no home day? Bella, you have to go. But I bought 10 pints. Right, either nick all 10 of them right now or cut your losses. You were warned at last call. Can I have a plastic cup? No, dude, listen, we can't let drink leave the bar. This is fucking ridiculous. Chap, I'm gonna level with you. It's nearly 2 a.m. We have to clean this dump. I have a two hour drive home. I'm cranky, I'm tired, I'm fed up, and I'm not about to take responsibility for your inability to make good decisions at the bar. You were warned at last call that you only had half an hour to drink up. We're closed, it's time to go, it's time to skedaddle. You can either walk out or you can be walked out. Can I have a plastic cup? <laughs> Things I put up with is a Belfast bouncer, part eight. The sweet kiss of a police officer's baton. One night we had a big rave on. About halfway through the night, a crowd had gathered outside the club. They're chanting, jeering. Oh, fun. A woman walking her dog comes up to me on the door and she says, I heard them saying they're waiting for a crowd inside to come out and fight them. And all I could think was, well, this is Brilliant news! Oh goody. We had a city centre radio link which connected other clubs and Musgrave PSNI. So I grab it and I come over the net. This is Buck Teeth requesting assistance from all Pisneyland employees. To which they respond. We're busy. And that's when I hear it. The chanting from behind. A crowd inside coming out. They could be drunkenly marching to war if it wasn't, well you know, a bunch of drunken louts about to swing handbags in the middle of a university. They run out past us and suddenly we have about 50 to 100 people people kicking the bejesus out of one another. We keep all the doormen on the door because there's fuck all we're gonna do against a crowd that size until an innocent bystander, a young lady, I remember a young red haired lady was sitting on a wall with her fella and some random guy in the crowd runs out of the crowd and cracks her in the side of the head and knocks her completely unconscious. She falls, smashes her head off the ground and I thought fuck. So we all ran out, all four or five of us ran out and stood in a circle around this girl so that one of our medics from inside could come out and work on her. But now that we're out there, we become the targets. And that's when we hear it. Sirens. The pillars! The unrelenting fury of the thin blue line had arrived to show us what good old police training in action looks like. Nope, it was one guy and his terrifying dog. Suddenly, there are people literally flying in every fucking direction as the dog was just let loose in the crowd. It began biting people, it's throwing them around, and just behind it is its handler just swinging his baton, kicking the life out of anybody that was within arm's reach. The divided faction briefly unite to fight a common foe but that's when the landies started charging in you couldn't move for battens and irritant spray and it would have been really funny if they hadn't battened half of my team while they were at it things i dealt with as a belfast bouncer part nine the fucking roof bar i'm sorry but i've been living here 
for a long time. I think there is maybe four days of the year that you can maybe, maybe justify a roof bar in Northern Ireland. So when they added a roof bar to the repertoire of bars within our building, I thought, oh, oh no. And another thing, on a hot sunny day, a student bar with a rooftop available for all to lobster their skin, drinking from midday to midnight, three pints for a fiver. Who thought that was a good fucking idea? When a member of bar staff came over the radio shouting, can we get security to the roof bar? It was an explosion of testosterone straight away. So you had the slow and sensible guys who got in the lift ready when they got to the top to deal with whatever was happening. Then you had the young lads swinging their massive wabs around as they proved their manliness by sprinting up four flights of fucking stairs. I was always in the second group because nothing screams fitness like a man bursting through a doorway looking like a punctured parade float and running head first into the fight like some kind of drugged up rhinoceros. This however, pioneered a very special manoeuvre used only by the most savvy of security staff, running directly at a group of people fighting with your head down, causing incredible injury and shock to everyone in the immediate vicinity. The elevator doors would open and then the refreshed and more logical of my colleagues would come out and sweep up whatever was left of Barty Miss Big Balls on the floor whilst I scooped up my internal organs off the ground and tried to swallow them again. A job well done. Also, Scrapping with a guy off his head on cocaine in a tiny little elevator is not fun. Things I've dealt with as a Belfast bouncer, part 10. Meeting other bouncers on the lash. No harm intended, most of us doormen are dead on, but the ones that are dicks, man, they are the worst. Take this for instance. A dude is being a tad on really and is being escorted out of the bar. Mate, I'd have wrapped that fella up and left him in A&E. That's fantastic. I've always wanted to meet a complete psychopath. A young lady walks past you on the door and an off-duty doorman walks up behind you and says, Mate, she's unreal, wouldn't you just love to? Nope, I'm gonna stop stop you there. Fair enough, people are going to find other people attractive, that's human nature. Most of us draw the line well before we're fantasizing about sexually assaulting a complete stranger. You're a bit small to be a bouncer. I could knock your pan in. I, I have I have no doubt you could. So I've just talked a rather aggressive man down off the door. I'm walking him off the property and I give him a cigarette. He fist bumps me and away he goes. No issues. Why'd you waste your time chatting him when you could have just knocked him out? Because I'm not a fucking lunatic. And I have been fortunate enough to develop social skills that go beyond seeing how far I can ram my knuckles into various people's orifices. End of night comes. Everybody's leaving. Two big burly lads covered in tribal tattoos stop the chat on their way out the door. Lads, if you need any gear, come chat the down at the bar, we'll remember you because you were sound as fuck. That is the politest way anybody has ever offered me drugs. And as much as I appreciate the offer, I'm happy enough with my dad bod. That and my ability to go home most nights knowing that I haven't permanently rearranged someone's anatomy because I've got the temperance of a two-year-old. These are all real things that were said to me over the course of one night. Be safe.